So log4j vulnerability has been making a lot of attention. Is this something you need to worry about? Is there any way you can mitigate against it? There is answers coming up. But first, who am I to tell you? My name is Brian. I've been working with technology for 10 plus years, and I'm currently working as a network security engineer. So let's go ahead and take a look at the computer and jump in. Okay, so over here on the computer, J. we can go ahead and look at some NIST documentation. NIST is a, a, one of the federal agencies that always seems to have really good documentation. Uh, sometimes it's a little too much, but I, I like on how they always seem to have it as soon as possible. Um, so if we look in here and look at this current description, I want you guys to take a look at it from maybe a standpoint, maybe you have, you're a business owner, maybe you're maybe you're just uh, you get delegated the job to being the IT person because you might be the best at the at it. You might not be the one who actually knows how to secure it or you know how to add users, for example, but maybe it's not your your expertise in security. So if you look at this, it sounds kind of kind of cryptographic in my personal opinion. But basically what it's saying is that threat actors or malicious people, whatever you would like to call them, have found a way to use a service that runs on quite a few different computer systems, everything from some IoT devices, and it could even go up to major major infrastructure, and able to do remote code execution. So remote code execution is kind of a weird topic. Um, so basically, if you as the threat actor say, hey, I want you to go ahead and run this code, please do it, basically. And that's program, if it's not set up right, it can easily go, sure, and it'll run whatever code that that person wants to tell it to do. So that's kind of what we're looking at here. That's why if you scroll down here, you see that this is a critical score. That's why, because it's remote code execution and it's really known and documented out on how to do it. Um, personally, I haven't actually labbed that up, but ultimately the way, best way to protect it against stuff like this is know your environment. Have good documentation on what you have and what you're running. Um, I've seen quite a few places that don't have any documentation on what computers are on the network. What Knowing what you have is three-fourths of the battle. So I'm going to go jump over to one of our over to uh, Fortinet. If you're not familiar with Fortinet, they are a security vendor. Um, I personally, like I said, I work in network security. So I am looking at it from a network security person's point of view, but you'd look at it for your point of view. What is the, the issues? And their documentation goes over this pretty clearly. And it, it's, it's okay, but the main area that you should look at is mitigating the issue. So what do they recommend? Set up IPS. If you don't have IPS, intrusion prevention, set up on your network, you should probably consider that. If you're hosting web applications, if you have a web application firewall, that's pretty beneficial. But ultimately, what in, what products are impacted? So if we click on their documentation on this, we can scroll down and see these following products are not impacted. So if you have any of these products, uh, including the FortiGate firewall, that it's it's not impacted. But if you continue scrolling down, you can see some products that were impacted by this. And as you can see, some of them haven't been fixed, which is outstanding. They're already working on this so diligently. I'm proud to call them a, a, a really good firewall vendor. But you can jump over to other ones. Um, SonicWall is another firewall vendor. So we look at this, and first thing you see the red arrow, and it kind of gets you, your heart up and going, okay, this is bad. But scroll down and always look at what it is. So, for example, Gen 6 firewalls, Gen 7 firewalls, do you have a switch? Is it impacted? No. So knowing what you have in your environment is three-fourths of the battle. And even the same for Sophos. They have really fancy, kind of scary looking stuff. But if you scroll down, you can see, okay, hmm, what products do we have? And do I have Sophos Central? It's not impacted. Cool. What about my Sophos email? Under investigation. So I probably should continue paying attention to this page. Um, Sophos firewalls, for example, are not impacted. All, for, all versions. So, so being able to find documentation on what you're looking for is three fourths of the battle on any 
network security, knowing what you have in your environment, what's running, why is it running, will save you tremendous amounts of time. So with that, the biggest takeaway I can say is knowing what you have in your environment. If you do happen to have a firewall in your environment, utilize those resources. If you have a, uh, a contractor, an MSP that, that already works with it, ask them if hey, am I already running some of this? Chances are you are if you have a managed service provider. If not, then you might consider that. Um, so ultimately, I want to make this, wanted to make this clear and simple for most people. There, like I said, there's plenty of videos out there, but there's not many that are clear, and this is what my problem is. So yes, this is some bad code that can mess up stuff that's in pretty much everything. But what can I do to prevent against it? And am I doing enough? So I hope this has been informative to, for you. And if you like this video, like I said, this is pretty much this is a little outside my normal video content, but I definitely felt this was important to go ahead and put it out. If you like this content, go ahead and give me a like. Let me know. Drop in the comments. If you really like and see, maybe look at around at the channel, see if there's some other videos that you might find interesting. And who knows, you might even subscribe. If you want notified, click the bell, and YouTube will notify you every time I create new content. Thank you for watching.